morning, Pastor Jerry Castleman from Shepherd's Heart Fellowship Church. We are in an advancing kingdom of God. These are great days, for He is advancing the kingdom of God throughout the place, the earth, the world. We are having great days at the Shepherd Heart Fellowship Church, involved in the advancement of that kingdom. Advancement of the kingdom of God and involvement in it can be rejected. Here's the true event of Luke chapter 4. Jesus Christ has been in the River Jordan. He's called out. He's, he's going in. And John the Baptist takes him under and he comes back up and a voice from heaven comes out and it is the Father. And the Father says, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And uh, the dove comes down in, in the symbolical form of the Holy Spirit, fills the Christ with the Holy Spirit. He walks out of the River Jordan to advance the kingdom. And the first place he goes is into the desert, hot and dry, without food, water, fasting for 40 days. What a place to advance the kingdom of God. There's nobody out there. But during those 40 days, and at the end of the 40 days, he overcame three great temptations, all the physical things our bodies desires, overcoming all those things, and the offer of having the world in his hands, if he would worship Satan, he overcame those by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was and is fully God, filled with the Spirit, also though fully man, 100% man. So the question arises, can we as believers, Christians today, do what Jesus did? The things that he did are that he preached good news to the poor. So that would be good news in itself. If I'm poor, in different ways I may be poor, he preaches good news, and all of a sudden, I'm not poor. He preaches or he declares release of the prisoners. Whatever your bondage is, whatever you are held in bondage by Satan, sin, and temptation, whatever has held you in the past, you can be free because Jesus Christ is free. He overcame, and you may say that, that I'm not Jesus, but understand today that Jesus conquered the powers of hell and all sin and all temptation while he was 100% man in the flesh. He conquered those things, not because he was God and is God, we have no problem with that, but because he was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, we are filled with the Holy Spirit we can be relieved of our poverty. I don't know how you want to take poverty, maybe your riches, but I think more in the lines of a poor spirit, poor obedience, poor lifestyle, poor church attendance. I don't pay my tithes. All those things we are poor in in today's world and surprisingly, even in the church of Jesus Christ today. Uh, however, you could do all those things, pay tithes, go to church, and be really active in the Lord, and probably still die and go to hell. But Christ came to release the prisoner from those things. And he came to give us good news to our poor condition. He came to release us from things that hold us from doing the right things. He came to actually bring a sight, physical sight. We believe that he can do that today. He certainly gives us sight in the spiritual realm. Things we could not see to, uh, yesterday through him today, you can see better today. And growing in that sight relationship, you keep moving on, you regain sight. Uh, you may regain it, and I hope all at once, but certainly the Christian life is a life growing sweeter as the years go by. He came to give sight to the blind. Story, uh, it's a true story of my grandmother back in the 70s. 1970s. My grandfather had died and she remarried a Church of God pastor. And before he married her, he converted her. She was an unbeliever, may have believed, but was not active in that belief. And lifestyle was just not that of a believer. And once she prayed through at her kitchen table, she gives a testimony and I can still hear it today. It was something like scales falling from my eyes. You remember the story of Paul in Acts 9, when the Lord said, why are you persecuting me, Saul? He got up and something like scales fell from his eyes, fish scales fell from his eyes, and he was taken into Damascus only for three days later, his eyes were opened, and then 
he could see. So he was restored. So like grandmother, she finally could have sight and went on, incidentally, to teach Sunday school in the church, which for me, that was kind of ironic, but she did. It's amazing what God can do. He can do that through you today. And we are experiencing that in the church today. The Shepherd's Heart Fellowship Church, God is advancing his kingdom through us so that we could get into the flow and be a part of advancing the kingdom of God to the world. So he said that, I've come to give news, good news to the poor. I've come to release a prisoner. I've come to give sight to the blind. And I've come to free oppressions. Maybe you're oppressed by things today. And if you will take the spirit-filled Jesus and understand in your Christian life, you can be a man or a woman filled with the Holy Spirit like the full man of Jesus Christ and conquer by the power of the Holy Spirit in the advancing kingdom. Of course, he does the conquering through you. Oppressions can seize, and sometimes there are things coming at us every day. But if you release those oppressions to him and trust him, all things really will work to the good of Jesus Christ. And then finally, he corrects all things in time. The word says that he proclaimed the year of the Lord's favor. This is probably the only prophetic thing, in a sense, that is yet to happen in the history of the world. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus said, I've come to proclaim that year. Certainly, in a very true sense, his cross and the blood flow down Calvary was a great proclamation of the Lord's favor. Sins are forgiven, washed in the blood, cleansed of the carnal nature in the heart. So in a sense, truly, this is the Lord's favor. So we have been certainly in the Lord's favor for 2,000 years since Calvary. But also the year of the Lord's favor. One day, all things will be restored. The scroll of the atmosphere of all creation will be rolled up and God will renew his creation. All believers will live in the joy and the pleasure of Jesus Christ for eternity. There will be other people living other places that are not preferable, but you as a Christian, spirit-filled, allowing the spirit to conquer through you all of your uh, bad news, like getting ahead of the bad news and getting with the good news, uh, allowing the Spirit to release you as a prisoner from sin and destruction, regaining the sight of being blinded. I couldn't see things before. Now I see things. Now I really am interested in doing kingdom things. And then freedom from oppression. And then finally, you look forward to the great day of the Lord when creation really will be restored and all life and injustice will be made true and correct, all because of Jesus Christ. Then he rolled up the scroll as he sat there in the Nazareth synagogue. They, they listened to the words and he said in verse 21, he said, as I have said today, these things are fulfilled in your hearing. The Jews in the synagogue there in Nazareth, the one place where Jesus was brought up, grabbed a hold and took him out to a cliff and ready to shove him over the cliff to his death. However, Jesus Christ, filled with the Spirit, walked through the grasp of their hands, and they could not hold him. This rotation or this pendulum will swing back again, and finally, two and a half or two or three years later, Jesus Christ will voluntarily then lay on the cross, and through his laying down of the cross, giving his blood so that you could live this kind of life, and that we can all become a part of the kingdom of God advancing in these days when we have so much trouble. Experience the Lord's favor, the year of the Lord's favor. Look forward to the things to come when all things will be put in order. But to do that, please remember, you and I, the church of Jesus Christ, will live the spirit-filled life even today. God bless you and look forward for the kingdom of God advancing in your world today.